Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of Mission Snapshot. As always, we are so glad that you are here because we have more mission stories for you. Here in the studio is Veronica. So that is evening school day. So Yay. we're going to get uh, some great stories for you. And over there is Hannah and she will be dropping links below. So please keep an eye out for that. Okay, Veronica, where are we headed today? All right, so we have some more stories um, that we got from Israel a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and so I'm just excited to share. The first place we're going to go is Indranagar. Indranagar, great. Nagar. So we have an evening school there, and our first story is about a little girl. She's, well, not so little. She's in eighth grade, and so her family, um, she's from a Hindu family, Hindu background, and, um, you know, grew up with everything that entails, including how she dressed, um, jewelry. Mm. They have a lot of traditional um, makeup and, uh, you know, everything right. down to their, you know, rings and bracelets yeah. and all of that. It's very um, part of their religion. Right. And you're expected to wear that. So she um, started attending the school, as many of the kids do, just for an after-school activity, for some right. help with her schooling, right. uh, added uh, meal. Um, and as she studied there and learned more about Christians and Jesus, she it made her question what she was wearing and what she was doing. Wow. And so it kind of, um, you know, she started to question, well, why do I wear all of these things, the earrings and bracelets? And why do I wear this makeup and all of these things? And so um, she slowly kind of changed and stopped wearing the jewelry and then stopped wearing the makeup and then even changed her clothing to be wow. more conservative and just kind of muted because wow. a lot of the Hindu clothing is very bright and you know yeah. lots of bold and gold and all of this other stuff and so she kind of changed and the teachers were at first were kind of a little concerned like oh I hope the family's not upset right. because you know that's a big deal to change um, all of that and so but the family actually was very grateful and found out wow. that not only was the outside appearance changing, but her inside appearance oh, was changing. Yeah, yeah. And so the family had noticed not so much the outward changes, but that she was kinder and she was obedient and she was more studious and oh, wow. all of these changes that, um, you know, every parent hopes for, you want yeah. that in your children. And so instead of being upset, they were actually just very grateful to the school for the changes wow. that they've seen. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, if your daughter is coming home and changing slowly over time, I'm sure that the parents are trying to find out what are you yes. teaching my child because I'm seeing such a difference in her. Yeah, so it definitely makes them kind of question and want to know more about what's being taught right. themselves, which is part of our evening yes. schools and it's yes. wonderful to see because it definitely yeah. raises a question in their mind and the more that they hear and learn hopefully they will make changes right. themselves right. Um, but yeah it's just a wonderful testament to um, how just learning about a different culture in a different way yeah. can can help people yeah. come closer to God and well that's exciting yeah so that's what our first story um, our second story is we're going to go to Cotator. Okay. And this is also about a young girl. This story, like, just touches my heart. Uh, it's a very sweet story. It's a sad situation, but at the same time, it is just yeah. heartwarming. So, um, basically, it's a family. They have uh, two children that we know of, a son who's older, maybe 10th grade, and then their daughter is in 7th grade. Okay. And um, they... Uh, in the family, the father is um, very abusive, very uh, treats his wife horribly. Um, and so growing up, both children, of course, have observed this behavior as yeah. anyone in an abusive family sees that. You right. can't hide that. Um, and sadly, the son has tended to take after his father and he's not well behaved and he's kind of, you know, he's seen that example and followed it unfortunately wow. yeah. um, and the mother has tried to shield her daughter as much as possible right. um, and now that she's getting older and has matured 
the mother is very frightful, very, very afraid for her daughter right. because she doesn't know to what extent the father might um, wow. abuse or, or, or take advantage of the family. And so um, the daughter has been attending the evening school and has been learning, you know, wonderful right. things there. Um, but the mom has recently spoken with um, the teachers and the Bible workers there and, and basically said, I, can you just take my daughter? I want wow. to give my daughter to your church because I know you'll take care of her. I know she will be safe. Wow. I know that she will not be hurt. And I am only alive to keep her alive. Wow. The mom is to the point, I mean, she doesn't care about her own life anymore. The only thing keeping her going is keeping her daughter safe. Wow. And I mean, it just, you know, it's just heartwarming and like, yeah. Yeah. terrifying at the same right. time hearing this story because mm. it's so sad. I know there are so, you know, so many people in the world going through similar situations. Um, yeah. But it's just so sad to hear. Um, but at the same time, this mom has enough confidence and faith in yeah. our church. She knows that we, as a right. church, that that church is, they're never going to hurt that daughter. Right. They're never going to. So she, you know, just like Hannah giving up Samuel. Yeah, I was just thinking that, you know, yeah. She wants to just give her daughter yeah. to the church. And so, um, you know, it just we just pray that there is some way that we can um, right. help her further. Right, right. So we are checking on ways that yeah. we can help the daughter. We're working with our Israel yes. our director in India to see what we can do to help her because her mom is so concerned about her well-being. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a hostile home environment, and um, if there's any way that we can help, that's what we want to do. So, yeah, we will hopefully yeah. get more detailed information and find okay. out if there's a way to, you know, take her in and and right. help her so right. that she doesn't, right. you know, continue in that environment. Well, I'm thankful that the mom has seen a change in her daughter from the time that she's been at the evening school mm -hmm. and has that confidence but again, as you said, it breaks your heart to yes. know that she's just one representative girl yeah. of many who are in that situation. And we would yeah. love to be able to help. Oh, all absolutely. Of them. <laughs> yeah. But you have to just, yeah. you know, help the ones that come to your door. That's and right. That's she's at our door right at now. Our so door right absolutely. Now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're going to move on to Matachukalam. And another story, this is now a young boy. He's a second grader. Okay. And um, so their family, he's uh, just a sweet little boy, but their family, um, the father is a fisherman. Mm. And uh, normally that would be a decent trade and something that would keep them going right. re relatively well. Um, but unfortunately, when COVID hit, it mm. was one of the trades that, kind of got shut down yeah. and they were like you can't go out and fish you can't leave your home right and so he had you know there there's their food there's their money he can't eat the fish he can't sell the fish that you know yeah. he can't go get them and so the mom tried to look around and see if there's anything she could do she's been able to do little jobs here and right. there but again with the lockdowns the way they are in india there's not a lot she can do she right. can't go out and just get any job she right. can't you know um so she's only been able to bring home, you know, uh, food for maybe a couple meals a week, um, you know, not right. much at all. And um, so during this time, seeing that uh, the evening school was still open to helping families and kids, um, they've been very thankful because their son has still been able to come to the evening school and receive right. a meal um, learn a little bit about Jesus and praying. And so they've... Uh, turned to um they've learned from him how to pray and so even though it doesn't look good right. you know they're not sure when all of this craziness will end but they've learned how to pray and and kind of put trust in a, a god a true god right. and so they're very grateful for the evening school and for that um hope that they've been giving them just right. in being able to pray right so we have a future bible worker on our hands yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Because he's going home and sharing with his family yeah. what he's learning, and yeah. they're learning from him. They, um, I'm trying to remember if this is the the right. Uh, yeah. So this family again is Hindu background. Mm -hmm. So 
the mother because he's teaching about praying. So she's actually started praying to her Hindu gods for the evening school. Right. Because she didn't know any, like, who right. was I supposed to pray right. to? But, right. So, but it was just really neat that she's wanting the evening schools to do so well because she's so thankful, right. but all she knows to do is to pray to the gods that she already knows. Yes. And then her son is slowly helping her understand, no, you need to pray to this right. God. You need to yes. pray to Jesus, not, you know. Right. But it's just so sweet, that even the act of, you right. know, praying however she knows how for the evening schools because she just is so thankful for what they're doing. That's amazing. And I'm sure that her prayers, even though in when she didn't know who to pray to, yeah that God heard those prayers, yeah. even though they weren't directed specifically at him. But Satan's right. not the God of our evening school. So exactly. God can say, no, she's praying to me. God knows our hearts. Yeah. And he knows that that's where her heart was, Yeah, was to get them help. And and even though, like you said, she didn't know exactly who to pray to, but it's, it's your motive. It's what's inside yeah. that is really what oh, matters. That's sweet. That's so, a sweet story. Yeah, yes. that was really sweet. Um, so then we're going to talk about uh, one more story here in Kathasali Polyam. Yep. I slaughtered that word, but this time I got it good. That's, that's, a, good. that's a, They're hard. Let me, yeah, they are hard, yes. Um, so we're going to talk about another boy. Mm -hmm. um, and this young man is older, so he's actually more around ninth grade okay. age. And um, so his parents were concerned because he did not enjoy school. Mm. He was not a great scholar. <laughs> uh, he would skip out a lot. He would not be attentive to his right. studies, uh, hang out with friends, go to arcades. Like He wow. just wanted to do other things and right. not focus on school. Um, well, one positive thing came from this whole COVID <laughs> epidemic, wow. and that is uh, all of his normal hangouts shut down. Wow. He couldn't go anywhere. No. He couldn't hang out with his friends. Right. And so what's left but to study? <laughs> So it actually forced him to go to the evening school for right. a couple of reasons. One, right. it's like the only place open. They're the only place still doing anything. Right. And even though it's not his normal type of thing, um, he's like, well, you know, I, I would imagine maybe some of his friends went there right. too or something. And so he just went along. Right. But the more, it's interesting mm -hmm. what happens. The more you hang out in a certain area or the more that you hear about mm -hmm. Jesus, right. uh, the more you want to. Yeah. And so he would go and he would get some food, which was needed, of course. Right. Um, but then he would also listen to whatever they were talking about. So the songs that they would sing were the Bible verses that they would, you oh, know, right. talk about while the kids are eating. Um, and it kind of, you know, started to pique his interest a little. And so during this time, because that's the only place he's been <laughs> able to go, he's learned a lot about God. Wow, yeah. And it has changed his character. And he's more... Wow, um, that's obedient and respectful at home and he's you know trying harder with his studies trying to focus more mm -hmm. and his parents are just completely shocked like what is this change <laughs> how is this happening but it's you know again they're just very thankful they've realized it's because right. he's going to the evening Thank school because cool. right. that's the influence he has now and so it's just another wonderful example right. of how our schools are helping on a day daily basis yes. and especially during this hard time they are still an influence of good. Yeah, this reminds me of the story that Christina shared a few episodes ago mm -hmm. of the Bible worker who was kicked out of his home because yes. the son just didn't want to hear any right. more about Jesus. But then when COVID hit, the father yeah. had to move back home. So the, <laughs> so the right. son had nowhere to go when he was listening to his father talking on the cell phone and praying with yes. people and sharing. So he was a captive audience. And this young man was a yeah. captive audience. He had nowhere else to go. Right. And that's where he was able to be introduced to Jesus. So there are yes. there are a few good things that have come from the lockdowns and whatnot. Yeah. And God's in there working, trying to do as Absolutely. much as he can. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is... It's a horrible time yes. for, for millions of people, but right. um, we have to see where God is still in control and still working. And um, and I think that, you know, even in this time, there's just been so many wonderful miracles yes. happening. Mm -hmm. And we have to praise God for that. That's right. Absolutely. As uh, Joseph said in Genesis 50, I think, you know, what Satan 
you know, meant for harm, yes. God has turned around for yep. good. And you, we can see evidences of that all the time. Absolutely. Well, I thank you so much for sharing these stories. Yes. Um, they, they show us how God really is working in these difficult times because not all of their situations even have been uh, positive, but God is still there, still yes. drawing hearts and still working. Yes. And we are so thankful that the evening schools, even though they haven't been able to meet, have been deemed humanitarian yes. in their efforts to to give out food. So yeah. they've been allowed to do that. And so we really appreciate all the donors who have been donating to the evening schools. Mm -hmm. um, these stories are part of of the results of the funds that you've been able to yes. share. So, so thank you Absolutely. very much for that. Yes, thank you. And if you are interested in learning more about our evening schools, we will drop a link below to the evening school page so that you can find out more about that because Veronica is working on the Sabbath School project. Mm -hmm. How is that going? Because the last time you were on, you were really close to being I finished. Am, yeah, it's, it's still, it's getting there. I'm getting the stories put together. Um, it's still going to take some time just trying to find enough stories with so many of our schools right. not able to function properly. Um, so mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, <laughs> I'm still aiming to have it ready um, by the first of the year. But okay, we'll, well that's we'll, good. Uh, hope for that. That's good. <laughs> that's good. So if you're interested in the program that Veronica is putting together, which will be a full quarter, mm -hmm mission focus mm -hmm. for um, a Sabbath school class yes. aimed at the primary level, which is yeah. grade... So uh, primary, uh, it's like age 8 to 12. 8 to 12. Something okay. like that. So, um, And you could modify it. It's mainly just mission stories, so you don't have to do the full program. If you just want to pull mission stories for any age group, it would work fine. Right. But yeah, mostly geared toward primary age. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so keep an eye out for that. We'll mm -hmm. let you know as soon as that's ready. And if you're interested in learning anything more about Jesus for Asia, we invite you to go to our website, jesusforasia.org, and you can take a look at our more than 60 projects that we are involved with and find some that you resonate with. And then we invite you to pray for these as well as provide any financial support that you would like to do because prayer is so important. Mm -hmm. And some of our stories today were about praying yes. and how that has impacted lives. So we ask for your prayers. If you are watching this on our YouTube channel, you please do subscribe to our channel. That way you'll get notifications of when we do live. And if you are watching this on Facebook, we invite you to like our page so that you too can get the notifications of when we have our mission snapshots. So we thank you again for joining us. This has been your mission snapshot.